morning, everybody. Uh, I first wanted to start this chapel talk with a little celebration. There was an article about AI that I thought would help inform the writing of this talk. And I knew it existed, but I couldn't find it anywhere. I thought I knew how to look through all of our library databases, uh, and I tried everything that I knew. I assumed that I would have to give up and pay for it. But before I gave up, I sent an email to Dr. Reese and asked her if there was something I was missing. Did the Loose Library have access to it? Not 24 hours later, Dr. Reese replied to my email and attached the article as a PDF. Librarians are magicians. I'm so excited to be here today for our annual chapel talk in which we officially visit the core value of integrity with you all. Last year, Mrs. Waters stood here and I stood over there. I was new here and was still getting to know you all. Today, I am grateful to feel like part of this community and still a little daunted to take over the big lectern from Mrs. Waters. You look good up there. <laughs> we have had libraries for much of the time in which we have had writing. Libraries of clay tablets in Mesopotamia date back to the 2000s BCE. The image on the screen is an artistic rendering of the Great Library of Alexandria in Egypt, which was founded somewhere in the range of 200 to 300 BCE. For much of the time we have had libraries, human beings in those libraries have helped us effectively archive and access information. The library is integral to knowing our history as a species. A library comes with a tacit understanding. No single person can know everything. Instead, the goal is to be able to draw connections among a wide range of topics. We value having access to a variety of perspectives in a variety of formats. As evidenced by my aforementioned search for a magazine article, we swim today in a sea of information that was unimaginable 50 years ago, let alone 5,000 years ago. Melvin Vopson at the University of Portsmouth in the UK wrote in 2021 that each day on Earth we generate 500 million tweets, maybe those are now X's, 294 billion emails, 4 million gigabytes of Facebook data, 65 billion WhatsApp messages, and 720,000 hours of new content added daily on YouTube. The amount of digital data created each year is growing exponentially. And that's just the data stored on computers, not to mention what's printed and all the information stored in our collective and individual memories. Maybe it's not even enough to say that we swim in a sea of information. Perhaps it's more accurate to say that we float adrift in a vast universe of information. Librarians help us navigate that information. They curate collections. They learn how to search. They make connections between and among topics. Like a scientist refining an experiment, a librarian iterates, refining search terms and trying new ways of drawing a line from one piece of information to another. Here at Brooks, we have an impressive library staff that can help you find just the source you need for a paper, a project, or a curiosity. As the quantity of available information has increased, the development of so-called artificial intelligence models is a natural consequence. The amount of information we have is beyond human scale, and it makes sense to leverage computers to help us out. When we gave this talk last year, none of us had heard of ChatGPT. The term AI was either theoretical or the stuff of science fiction. Now ChatGPT and its relatives are permanent features in our academic lives and likely elsewhere in our daily lives, too. So. We decided to ask Perplexity, which is a reasonably effective AI engine that at least makes an attempt to cite its sources, to give us some ideas for how we might talk with you all about academic integrity. It suggested five ways to hook you in. Their ideas were pretty good. Here are three of them. Idea one, the bold statement hook. Start your talk, it said, with a bold statement that will grab your audience's attention. For example, academic integrity is not just a moral issue, it's a matter of national security. That is a bold statement. Seems a little strong, but there is some evidence that academic integrity may actually be an issue of national security. The US military colleges all issue clear directives about the importance of academic integrity. They all treat it as a serious disciplinary matter. According to a law firm that specializes in collegiate discipline cases, being found to have committed academic integrity violations in school 
can impact someone's ability to receive a security clearance from the federal government. Lots of jobs require security clearances. Clearly, someone somewhere thinks this might be an issue of national security. If you aspire to be part of our national security apparatus, maintaining academic integrity is part of your path. Idea number two, personal story hook. Share a personal story or experience related to academic integrity. For example, when I was in college, I was caught plagiarizing, and it was the biggest wake-up call of my life. Neither of us was caught plagiarizing in college. That does not mean we are perfect. We just don't have personal stories to share around this one. The AI engine has almost suggested that we invent a story. The 1988 presidential campaign of Joe Biden can teach us something about this. Fun fact, President Biden was elected in 2020, but that was not his first run at it. 32 years earlier, in his 1988 campaign, it ended amid claims of plagiarism after he used someone else's personal story. Then Senator Biden was inspired by a speech by Neil Kinnock, then a member of the UK's House of Lords. During campaign events in September of 1987, Biden quoted Kinnock. He even cited Kinnock as his source. However, when news outlets caught wind of the quote, they aired video footage of the two politicians using the same material. Biden was accused of stealing the material, even though he had cited his sources, and it was the beginning of the end of that campaign. Allegations of plagiarism have continued to follow Biden throughout his political career. We'll learn a lesson and avoid making up a personal story here. Idea three, the quote hook. Use a powerful quote, it said, to set the tone for your talk. For example, integrity is doing the right thing, even when no one is watching. It cited C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis is an English author and theologian. You may know him from the Chronicles of Narnia series. For me, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe held a coveted top shelf spot in my little book bookcase when I was in high school. His writing's pretty quotable. One that I love is in The Magician's Nephew, Lewis wrote, what you see and what you hear depends a great deal on where you are standing. It also depends on what sort of person you are. Bad news for perplexity, though. C.S. Lewis is often misquoted, and this is a prime example. He did not say that integrity is doing the right thing, even though no one is watching. With a little extra digging, you might find the website of the C.S. Lewis Foundation, which maintains a list of quotes misattributed to C.S. Lewis. It's a good quote, but it wasn't written by him. It's a paraphrase of a sentence in Charles Marshall's self-help book, Shattering the Glass Slipper, Destroying Fairy Tale Thinking Before It Destroys You. Charles Marshall wrote that book in 2003. C.S. Lewis was born in 1898 and died in 1963. We have one bonus shout out to, to perplexity. One of its ideas was to share a striking visual. So here's a chart for you. Lindale High School in Texas did a survey. 39% of the students they surveyed thought it was not okay to cheat on tests or homework. 44% of students thought that cheating was okay on homework but not on tests. A truly frightening 16% of students thought it was okay to cheat on both tests and homework. Only 39% understood the importance of maintaining academic integrity in all areas of school life. Okay, so that's all the ideas that AI gave us. What are we to do with this information? We know that AI is here. We know it can do some cool things. And we know it's imperfect. We also know it's a threat to academic integrity. Where is it going? In an article in The Atlantic in August, Sam Altman, a co-founder and the current CEO of OpenAI, tells the story of the release of ChatGPT last November. The version that Altman's team released was not perfect. You might remember some breathless news stories about all the things that ChatGPT could do and all the things it couldn't do. It was funny when ChatGPT invented facts and sources. We called it hallucinating. Want to know what Altman had to say about this? He said that they could have waited five more years and that the results would have been jaw-dropping. They released an early and perfect version because, quote, people need time to reckon with the idea that we may soon share Earth with a powerful new intelligence before it remakes everything from work to human relationships, end quote. The purpose of releasing ChatGPT 3.5 in November of 2022 was simple. It was a warning. The new version of this software, which some of you may have already begun experimenting with, is called GPT-4. Altman describes it as an alien intelligence. It invents recipes, 
it writes college papers, it writes poems, it passed the bar exam, it makes mistakes and knows how to admit being wrong. Even though it wasn't designed to write complex software code, it figured out how. In one test, GPT-4 tried to submit content on a site that had a CAPTCHA. Those are the little check boxes and images that ask you if you're really a human. They make you identify bridges and bicycles and traffic cones. GPT-4 was stuck, it couldn't do it. So it took a screenshot, sent it to TaskRabbit, where it went to a human contractor, and it told the human contractor that it had a visual impairment and could not complete the task. The human completed it, and GPT-4 submitted its content. That's a pretty unsettling ethical workaround. This is hardly the tool that we want to trust with our academic integrity. GPT has a body of text that would take a human reader centuries to absorb. It's a compelling tool. But remember, it's not a person. Librarians are people. We learn from doing research. If we had taken Perplexity's advice at face value, we would have delivered a talk that sounded nice but was filled with factual errors. We would have learned not very much about AI, and we would have shortcut all sorts of valuable thinking. We wouldn't have followed paths of curiosity. We wouldn't have thought to look up President Biden's 1988 campaign thinking, wait, didn't he have some story about this? We talked last year about being separated from our primitive ancestors by our ability to embrace the challenge of our lives, resisting our most basic instincts to take the path of least resistance. AI tools can be a path of least resistance. As we mature, we are able to pause rather than act instinctively in the face of a challenge. So taking the path of some resistance is how we learn. Use a tool like Perplexity or ChatGPT and critique its results then cite your use of it. Integrity is important to Brooks because it encourages doing the right thing, not always the easy thing, and it can inspire a sense of purpose. You might even say it makes your education meaningful. It also means your community can count on you and you on them. We've invited the school prefects to remind us of the language in our community pledge. Joelle, take it away. Thanks, prefects. As Reverend Ofori mentioned, uh, tomorrow morning during third period advisory, each of you who is new to Brooks will have an opportunity to sign that pledge. When you pick up the black felt-tipped pen, we want you to think about the weight of what you are signing, a community built on relationships that rely upon you being authentic. In the words of author Spencer Johnson, integrity is telling myself the truth, and honesty is telling the truth to other people. Your signature on the pledge will hang alongside your classmates' signatures in the atrium of the science building. When you sign the pledge, you are committing to doing your own work, and when given permission to rely upon the work of others, you are promising to give credit where credit is due. This is true in all classes. It's more obvious in English, languages, and history, but no less true in math, science, arts, and SIC. If you research, you must cite. If you are asked to write in a second language, you cannot use Google Translate, even for one word. Use word reference or use a dictionary. Any service that can translate sentences for you and tell you the exact word or conjugation for your context is not allowed. If you collaborate on a lab report, you must indicate that you have collaborated. When you operate outside of these expectations, we call it cheating or plagiarism. Related to the pledge, we are asking two actions of you. 
When you complete a quiz, test, lab, or paper, you must write or type, this is my honest work on the assignment. Furthermore, if you received help from the learning center or a parent, a dorm parent, a tutor, a teacher, or a peer, you must acknowledge their assistance on the document that you hand to your teacher. Just write, I received help from, and list the people at the bottom of the submission. We have asked each academic department to identify their preferred method of citation, Chicago, MLA, APA, et cetera. Each of your teachers should have a citation resource posted on their Onbrooks class bulletin board so that you have a roadmap for best practice. Are you going to make mistakes? Most likely, that's a part of learning. We are asking you to try your best. When in doubt, reach out. Communication is key and helps us to avoid misunderstanding. You don't need to know every piece of information to be successful. Your education at Brooks is at least as much about your humanity as it is about the subject matter. Students in pre-mod just wrote an essay acknowledging their individual points of view. Advanced capstone students refine their skills in research and argumentation. It's not just about knowing the details, it's about what you do with them. Honors neuroscience students learn how to have compassionate conversations with patients. Everywhere you look, you see the value of humanity and relationships. Embrace it, celebrate each other, and when you need some information, go ask a librarian. Have a great year, everyone. Good luck.